So that's how we're going to think of the propagation of light in the ray optics chapter. All right. Now, light inter interacts with matter very strongly. Whenever you shoot photons to an object, that object for sure is going to do one of two things. It's either going to reflect those photons or it's going to absorb them. So that means that there is a very strong interaction between light and matter. Even when you send light through a transparent material, there is a lot of things going on inside the transparent material. That doesn't mean that the light is not interacting with the transparent material's atoms. Okay, there's always a very strong interaction. And um, <clears throat> so you can imagine that every uh, object, every atom of that object is emitting photons in all directions. And it is also receiving photons coming from all directions. Some objects can produce light, the atoms of the object can produce light because they're moving very fast, because the object maybe is very hot, like a light bulb. So they are luminous, they emit light even uh, without uh, there being any light uh, to be absorbed. But other objects, like yourself, you do not emit light, right? The reason why I can see any of you is because the light coming from the light bulb hits your body, right, gets reflected off your body, part of the photons will get absorbed, part of it will be reflected, and the ones that are reflected by your body, they just happen, some of them happen to be moving straight into my eye. And when they do that, they hit my retina and they produce an electrical signal there, or a chemical signal, and that gets registered as a, as a point of light, all right? So, <clears throat> this idea is very important. Very, very important to keep in mind when you're playing with lenses and refraction and, and images and so on. You have to keep in mind that that uh, light is moving in straight lines, that light is emitted from an object. Every object has photons all the time streaming out of that object. <clears throat> and the, those photons move in straight lines. Now think about what it means to see something. <clears throat> That's not a question that you ask yourself very often. What does it mean to see something or what does it mean to make an image of an object, to image something, to produce a photograph, or just to make an image of something? What does that mean? Well, what you want to do is <coughs> you want to uh, record information about the color about the location and about the source or where the light is coming from in an object. From many points of an object. To make an image of this guy sitting in front of me, right? what I need to do is I need to find out information about the color, the intensity, and the location of the photons. Where are they coming from for every part of his body? If I get that, if I get manage to record all that information, that's what I call an image. right? I can usually see only the, um, the light coming from the atoms on his body that are facing me, right? That are emitting photons in my direction. I cannot see the ones uh, that the light that is shot back towards the back of the room. But some of you can, the, ones, the people behind him can see those. So to make an image, you have to establish a connection between um, a part of the recording device, right? And a part of his body. And that uh, recording device have to be able to gather information about the color, the intensity, and where that photon came from. <clears throat> so the first uh, part of making an image of an object is that you need to have a recording device. That means a device that interacts with those photons and there is some permanent or temporary changes occurring in that device. If you're talking about a good old fashioned film, then the light hitting the molecules of whatever substance you put in this film produce some permanent changes in, that, in those molecules, right? If you're talking about the eye, those photons that hit my retina produce a temporary change in the state of the molecules in my retina, and that temporary change is recorded in the brain, right? That change goes away because the retina gets to get, must be get, get ready for the next stream of photons coming in, right? But that change gets recorded somewhere. <clears throat> in a CCD camera, of course, also, there is a electrons that uh, photons that come in, hit the CCD camera, and produce electrical currents. If you have a tree and you want to make an image of the tree, and the part, this part is say white, and you want to make an image of that, you say, well, I need to start with a film, right? 
some device that is going to record, that is going to interact with the photons coming out of the tree. So that's a step, but that won't give you any picture that you can recognize. And why is that? Say this point on the film. That point in the film is going to receive, remember that every part of the tree is shooting out photons in all directions. So this point, definitely there will be a photon from here that was shot in that direction, right? It hits the recorder and the recorder uh, could, uh, you know, uh, find, uh, record the frequency of that photon. It could record uh, the stream of photons per uh, second that it hits that spot. That would be the intensity, right? But it won't be able to uh, tell where that photon is really coming from. In fact, notice that this same point on the film will get hit by photons coming from different parts of the tree. So if this, if you were to obtain information about the tree by analyzing the information here, what you get is a mixture, a jumble of photons that are coming from all possible parts of the tree that are facing your recording device. So here, what is the color of that spot? Is it green? Is it white? It's going to be all mixed together. So you cannot recognize anything by just putting a film in front of a tree and exposing the film and that's it. You have to do something else. <clears throat> so a possibility was discovered 2,000 or so years ago. It's called Camera Obscura. Um, so what you do is you have your little tree here and you put your film, they didn't have a film like I said, but you put a box you put your film now inside a box. But the box is completely closed except for a little hole that you open here. That simple change in your strategy makes a big difference. Because now this green part of the tree, say this part, the atoms located here, they're shooting out green photons. To be able to hit the film, they're going to have to go through this narrow opening. If they go in a different direction, they don't hit the film, they don't get recorded. Right? And now the part of the, uh, the photons coming from a different part of the tree, say the bottom of the tree, to be recorded on the film, they will have to go through the hole, and they're going to hit a completely different part of the film. So what you end up having when you just simply make a, a box like this with a little hole is that you end up having an image of whatever is outside of the box and the image is inverted. It is this uh, opening here that discriminates between, that tells you basically that establishes a one-to-one -one -one correspondence between a location on the object and a location on the film. And that's exactly why you need to make the image of an object. So if you do a little bit of geometry here, you will find out that if you call this the height of the tree, the, this is the object, so HO for object, and you call this HI for image, then the distance to the object and the distance to the image from the front of the camera, those spirals are related to each other, right? This triangle have the same angle. They share that angle. So that means that H0 over HI should be equal to D, and not 0, DO over DI. So that tells you what the size of the image is going to be if you were wondering about that. 